Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of the Boyfriend Proof Podcast. This is your host, Monica Azmi. I just want to thank everyone for all the positive feedback I've received since I started this podcast, and I'm so happy that everyone has an opportunity to share their stories on this platform. I have a great lineup of guests who are ready to share their hashtag boyfriend proof story on this podcast. And before I introduce our guest for today, don't forget to follow boyfriend proof podcast on Instagram. And if you want to be a guest on the next episode and you have a relationship story that you want to share, please send me a DM. Or of course, if you want to stay anonymous, you can send me an email of your story to read on the show. My email is boyfriendproofpodcast at gmail.com. I would love to have you guys on my show. So today on the podcast, we have a very special guest. Her name is Myra. She is the host of the My Ray of Sunshine podcast, where she shares advice to positively improve your life by helping shed the light in different situations. She has covered topics about mental health, staying sane during quarantine, anxiety, and a whole lot more. She inspires her listeners with each episode. One listener even describes her as a cheerleader that everyone needs. Hi, Myra. Hi, Monica. I'm so happy to be here. (laughs) Yes. Thank you so much for reaching out and being on the show. You're actually um, one of the first people I connected with when I first started my podcast Instagram. So I'm so happy you're one of my guests and I absolutely love your content and your confidence. So for all the listeners who aren't familiar with you and your podcast, you want to share a little about yourself and how your podcast started? Sure, I'd love to. So as you mentioned before, my podcast name is My Ray of Sunshine. It has a little parentheses there because I wanted to include my name. And I really wanted to talk about positivity and helping shed the light in difficult situations. I've been focusing a lot on mental health. And it's like seven months that I've been podcasting, which is incredible because I feel like I've learned so much along the journey. I video podcast too, which is really fun. And I love getting to know guests as well. So yeah, I'm super excited for what's to come. My season three is launching in January, so I can't wait. So I've been just doing a lot of prepping and most of all networking as well. So I'm so happy to be here and to to talk to all of you guys. (laughs) Yes, I love it. I just want to tell everyone that Myra's Instagram is like, I just love her content because she, like she said, she does like video, like Zoom call, like type, like interviews on her, on her Instagram podcast thing. So I just thought that was super cool because like, I don't do that, but like, I like her content and she, and the (laughs) fact that like, you've been doing it for like seven months, like the consistency, I love it. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Thank you so much. It's a lot of hard work. Podcasting is not easy with just audio alone. And then adding video to it is a whole different equation right there. But I've really, really tried my hardest to like remain as consistent as possible. Remain Mm -hmm. active is just also really difficult. So it's a lot to balance sometimes, but it's definitely rewarding. And I feel like my season two ended kind of sporadically because I was like, listen, I can't, there's no way (laughs) I need a break. I was just checked out. So that's why I took like my break. And even during my break, I'm still working on it. So it's like, there's never, it's like a nonstop thing, but I feel like I'm definitely fingers crossed um, doing my season three in a more like in a smarter way Mm -hmm. because like I am prepping more and that way I don't have to feel so overwhelmed to launch an episode each and every week and like stressing out and barely sleeping to like get it launched (laughs) because that was me (laughs) yeah and um you're a podcast assistant too is that what you're doing? Oh, yes. So I so I am like a podcast virtual assistant, which I just started out <laughs> and I really wanted to like be able to help other podcasters because podcasting in general is very difficult. And I didn't know until I became a podcaster this past May. And I was just like, wow, this is a lot of stuff. And I would love to be able to like help other podcasters as well. 
who are in the same community as I am, who mm -hmm. want to just kind of like be stress-free, not have to worry about editing an episode because I feel like that I have a lot of experience with my own podcast. So I think that there's like that um, level where we can relate. So, so yeah, it's completely new. I know I launched my website a few weeks ago and yeah, like I'm really excited about what it can bring. Yes, I love it so much. And like on behalf of all the podcasters, we thank you for your work that you're doing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I <laughs> love so it. <laughs> yeah, dude, she works hard, man. Everyone go check her out. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to share with everyone that like I get a lot of DMs on my Instagram and a bunch of different boyfriend proof stories. But when Myra sent me her <laughs> audio messages, I was dying. And before we get into the story, I just want to say that there are some stories that may be perceived as like funny or silly or looking back at a certain time but like at the same time stories from when you're young can also be traumatizing and important to your growth and also like shape who you are now and when I heard a little about Myra's story it like struck a chord in me because I'm sure a lot of women have been put in similar situations and I have, but like, I think it's important to talk about it. So I'm going to pass the mic to Myra and just take us back to this event in your life. Walk us through what happened. So when I was in high school, so right now I'm 24 years old. And when I was in high school, I was a junior in high school. I was like a hopeless romantic. I wanted love so bad. And like, I was already looking for my husband in high school, which is silly, but that's just <laughs> how into a relationship I was. Like, I just wanted right. like a serious relationship. And I didn't even know the components of it, but I just wanted to fall in love. So I've gotten my heart broken so many times in high school. And it was just like a learning experience, of course. But in junior year of high school, I started dating this guy who, well, I'll just say boy, okay? Let's just call him <laughs> a boy because he was not a guy. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Did not behave like a regular man should. Right. Um, so yeah, so I was dating this boy and we like... First of all, like the whole relationship started by like him asking me out and I kept friend zoning him and I didn't really want to engage in like a relationship because I didn't see him that way. And I wasn't like, oh my gosh, I really like him. I didn't have a crush on him at all. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until we went to prom together and then I started seeing things. I'm like, okay, maybe like magic in the air, love in the air. Right. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, okay, we're probably in love right now. So, <laughs> so I was really excited. And like, I just liked the idea of having a boyfriend and the possibility that it could happen with this boy. Later after prom and stuff, he asked me out. And I just wish I would have like seen the red flags mm -hmm. right, right off the bat. Because first of all, I wasn't like attracted to him. And I feel like I was forcing myself to like him. And I think it was because of prom. And of course, <laughs> guys in tux, like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so I'm like, there's no way, there's no way I can't like him. So of course, I started feeling feelings for him and started you know, thinking about him more often and wondering about the possibility of us dating. And I was just like, you know what? Fine. I know you asked me out before and I know just put you in the friend zone pretty much. But now like it's different. It's different. Maybe I have feelings too. So I just gave it a shot. And to be honest, in the beginning of the relationship, it was just very, it was strange. It was very strange because first of all, we couldn't even talk to each other. Okay. I think communication is key, mm -hmm. period. Like right. whether in a friendship, in a I relationship agree. as well, like you need to communicate. Yes, definitely. <laughs> There's no other way that you can grow with someone if there's no communication. Was he avoiding the communication? I think it was just like he was awkward and I was shy and awkward as well. <sighs> so we just did not mesh well. I like know that I tried like 
literally I would be FaceTiming him like the night that he asked me out to be his girlfriend we were on Skype Mm -hmm. and on my phone I was literally googling things to talk about (laughs) dude (laughs) why are you exactly like me when I was in high school (laughs) I'm like what are people supposed to talk about in a relationship like what the heck (laughs) and I was I was really confused I was confused I wasn't sure like whether this was normal but I was just going with the flow I'm like listen he likes me finally a guy likes me back you know (laughs) I'm like why not just give it give it a shot and I feel like I kept googling like basketball because he really liked basketball Mm -hmm. so a girl can talk about basketball for so long I'm like (laughs) trying to get him into it I'm like okay this is cool we're talking because I thought that was normal and Like before I knew it, the conversation just died and it was just very boring. Like it was just like crickets, crickets, awkward silences. And I'm like, what is going on? I don't understand what the issue is. You know, I just kept putting it in the back burner. And I think that's also why, like when we first started dating, like all we would do was kiss because that's all we knew how to do like what to do. Mm-hmm. We we couldn't really have fun together, like joke around, like play a board game. You know, it was just like awkward. So it's like in those awkward silences, I hate awkward silences. So I'm like, okay, I guess we have to kiss now. Like, oh my God, <laughs> I can't even imagine. It was so bad to the point where I even asked my sister who was in a long-term relationship and I'm like, what do you guys talk about? Like, do you have to Google stuff? And she's like, no, what do you mean? She was more like, girl, leave him. What the heck? (laughs) I know, but I was still trying to, I was trying so hard for it to work. And I think that like when one time, like we were talking on the phone and I asked him like, so what do you want to talk about? And he's like, (laughs) I don't know. I I think we pretty much covered everything. And I'm like, forever? (laughs) Like, what? Why why does this sound like a job interview? (laughs) (laughs) I know. I know. It was so bad. I was mortified. And I'm like, you know, pacing around my room nervously. I'm like, what the heck do we talk about? I'm like, literally looking around my room. And I'm like, what book do you like to read? Like, anything that I would see, I would try to bring up in a conversation. Did you ever try to like be a little dramatic to see if he would respond a different way? Because that's something I I did in high school. I'd be like, um, I would like make up something crazy. Like, I don't even know. I can't even remember what I said, but I would make up something so crazy because like I would text my crush and I was like a junior too. And I like text my crush or the guy I was talking to. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I would make up something so like insane for them to talk to me. Cause I feel like I would have to like, it's not like a, Hey, like I didn't want the, Hey, what's up. I I, like Mm -hmm. in all caps, I'll be like, Oh, there's like, trash burning outside and like (laughs) like something crazy like did you ever like do that I should have because it really would (laughs) have it really would have made the conversation a lot more interesting I think if anything like maybe I would try to like play like those games like truth or dare or something Mm -hmm. like that but I, I really wasn't sure what the heck to do so oh now thinking about it rather than making it dramatic I think like we also communicated with emojis. So (laughs) it was like the competing emojis. He would send three kissy face emojis. I would send four. And then that's how. Oh, Lord. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. But it's like, (laughs) we're literally not talking about anything. (laughs) Clearly, we didn't last long. And soon you'll know why. But (laughs) (laughs) it's just that like. I think since this was like the first relationship that to me was like a real relationship because we kissed, Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, like this can probably be it. Like this could be my husband, like, oh my (laughs) gosh. And I was like trying so hard to like piece those pieces together and it just didn't make sense. Each and every time I just like couldn't see us together a year from now and more, like let alone like six months from then so it was just it was not making much sense but I think that because 
I was so invested in the relationship and I just wanted it to work so badly. Like I just kept trying to convince myself like, okay, this is normal. Like this is what normal couples do. All they do is kiss. All they do is just like watch TV because they don't have anything to talk about. Like that's fine. (laughs) And it wasn't. And it wasn't until like he went, um, this was at this point we were like a month and a half. So it was still like a baby relationship. So I found out that he was going to go to Disney and I'm like, oh my gosh, he was going to go to Disney for like maybe close to a week. And I was devastated. Like while he was gone, I, I felt like, so, oh my gosh, like, what am I going to do? Because we would always hang out. I'm like, oh my gosh, we can't text as much because now he's in Disney and now he's busy. So like, or I think our conversation became more valuable because we were just, he was telling me like what um, he was doing in this trip and all that cool stuff. But it wasn't until he came back that I was like, wow, I really missed him. And <laughs> you know how like distance makes the heart grow fonder. Yes. Oh <laughs> so my God. Like, so I, I thought I was in love. I was right. like, oh my gosh, this is what I needed. He needed to go away for me to miss him this much and for us to really like be together for a long time. And then I remember when he came back from from Disney and like we finally saw each other in school. I was like so nervous. I'm like, oh, okay, oh gosh, like I'm finally going to see him. And I was so nervous and weird. And that that's all it was. It was just like, oh, okay, I miss you. And then I just knew that he was going to come over my house later on that day. So I was just like head over heels. I'm like, okay, I I needed this. I needed this to prove to myself that like this relationship isn't weird. Maybe a week after he he came back and we started hanging out more often, like he would come over my house and then I started going over his house. And this was, I think, the very first time I went over his house because my mom was a little hesitant, of course. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I'm glad she was. Like, I'm glad like she waited, made me wait like for a month to actually go to his house. Like we're hanging out, we're kissing, but then that's literally it. Like not even touchy feely, nothing at all. It was just literally kissing and that was it. And <laughs> We were just watching TV because that's all we did. I swear. <laughs> so boring. And he never like said anything about like he wasn't bothered at all. They guys wouldn't talk. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I feel I feel like he enjoyed it. Right. But like it's not it's not even like he was a good kisser, or, let alone <laughs> me. I probably <laughs> suck, too. So it was just really, really bad. <laughs> Right. But like, he didn't seem to mind because he was never like, okay, let's do something, you know, like, let's go outside or I don't know. I feel like I was the one initiating everything. Mm -hmm. You were carrying their relationship. Basically. And it's like a relationship can't be like that. Yeah. Like the, your partner has to like make up for it. You know, they have to help you out. You two together have to um, make it work in that particular instance we're we're just like watching tv I remember we were watching wipeout <laughs> <laughs> and I literally got wiped out Monica. <laughs> okay let me just paint the picture so okay we're just on the couch his mom had recently left to like I don't even know where she went she just magically disappeared I'm like okay cool his like stepdad was like in a different part of the living room or something but we were so separated that you know he would have really had to like make his way to go see us so like that was fine I'm just alone in the house with a boy (laughs) and I'm like not for it at all we're watching wipeout you know like my innocent mind is like actually paying attention to the show because i'm like what else are we supposed to do like we clearly don't talk we don't catch up we don't do anything besides kiss we had just finished kissing so i guess now we watch the show so i'm like watching and he had his arm around me so i was on his right side And I'm just like sitting there, just like watching the show. I kept noticing that he was like heavy breathing. And I'm like, what the heck? (laughs) In my my mind, I'm like, 
what why is he breathing so heavy like what is going on and then I I was getting a little worried but I was concerned but as concerned as I was I was too afraid to look because I wasn't I wasn't sure if I was ready for that so I just kept like asking myself questions I'm like why is he breathing so heavily like should I ask him about it like what's going on and then I, I still decided to like just watch the show because it was just too darn awkward to do anything else. I can't help but hear his breathing get louder and louder. Like he's like heavy breathing. <laughs> and then not only that, I start noticing his, his left hand moving. <laughs> and I'm like, wait. So in my, <laughs> in my head, I'm like, what is happening like like does his stomach hurt like (laughs) so that's where my mind went right I had no idea and then his like his hand is moving up and down and I'm like what's going on but I'm like too scared I'm like too too freaked out by what's going on so I just avoided it but then like I just couldn't help but like still keep wondering what the heck was going on right next to me and I'm like hello I'm right next to you I need to know what's going on I couldn't keep watching the show I had to stop myself and I I remember I tried like peeking first like I'm like (laughs) what is happening so I I kept looking like down to where his like stomach was because that's where his hand was going and I'm just like, wait, what is that? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, wait, wait, what, what is that? Like, did I see that right? And, <laughs> and I'm like, wait, this is so weird. Like, I just wanted to fall in a hole, like, <laughs> that very moment. Because <laughs> I'm like, what the heck is going on? So I literally... Like I try to look and then it was weird what I was seeing because like I couldn't make out what was actually happening. And then I'm like, you know what? Like he's clearly still panting over here. And he he's like, he's not quiet or subtle at all. Like, let me just see what's going on. <laughs> so I finally brought myself, like I just turned my head and then I see his <laughs> penis. <laughs> And I'm like, are you joking? Oh my god. I was freaked out, Monica, because (laughs) I could feel the trauma. (laughs) Seriously. Because first of all, like I I think he was wearing sweatpants, but like somehow he made it it to like bend. So like it was (laughs) It was near, it was like his stomach area. So I was right. I was like, okay, his stomach hurts, blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> like, it's because it was there. Like he made it bend or something. I, I swear to you, like as soon as like I saw what was going on, like, mm-hmm. cause like, I think he was like trying to hide it with his shirt. And mm-hmm. when he was panting and stuff, like he just wanted to like lift up his shirt. So like he could like actually, you could actually see it. And I'm like, ew. <laughs> so I literally turn around. Like I, I turn to him. I notice it. And then it started like clicking. And I immediately, I like, like sc- scooted over all the way to the right, to the other end of the couch. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> and he's like, he's just looking at me. His face is all pink. He's like, uh, what? <laughs> like, he, he couldn't even say anything. He right. was just, like, in shock as well. And did you and- guys ever talk about sex or, like, boundaries, like, at Never. all? So it just, like, randomly, like, one day I'm just going to randomly pop it out. Like, <laughs> Yes, that's basically what happened. Yeah, we never, ever talked about it. And I never even pictured that with him. Like, I was so focused on enjoying the ride with a new boyfriend that I had and just getting to know him. You know, I was growing to like him more and more each and every time. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know, I never pictured that at all with him. Right. And especially after that moment, I was like, what the heck? So you were just really shocked because like you didn't even plan, like you weren't even thinking about it. 
No, not at all. Like I wasn't like, oh my gosh, I can't wait. Like, like in this commercial break, I'm just going to hop on him. Like never, right, right, <laughs> never, never, never. Like I never, I never thought about that. And I was just, I was okay with it because I was going at my own pace. And mm-hmm. um, I always knew people in high school, especially they they were very advanced. They yeah. did their own thing very fast. And you always hear about it. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, what is sex? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, if two plus two equals four, then how does this work? <laughs> like, I did not comprehend like what sex really was or like how it should be. But I just knew that that was not it. Right. So <laughs> I was just like, I, whatever it is, I am not ready for this <sighs> boy to be doing this right now. Like, I couldn't believe it. And I I was like shocked when, of course, I was shocked when I saw him and when I called him out for it, too, because like I, I was super dramatic and I like scooted over all the way to the right of the couch trying to get as far from him as possible. And then he was like, oh, like, I'm sorry. Like, and, and then I think he started registering like what he actually did and how it wasn't okay. And then I didn't want anything to do with him. But I remember like in my, in my anger, I was like, you can't have a girlfriend just to feel good. Like, I will never forget those words that I said to him because I was like, I w- that was the only way I could think of it. I'm like, you can't like we have to right. be on the same page. And I even asked him, I'm like, what did you expect me to do? Right. And he just kept looking at me and I don't even know where his mind went. But I was oh like, hell no. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so I was. I was super mad. I was super disappointed. And, you know, like, I think when he realized like what had happened, he, he was like, uh, like, I'm sorry. He was trying to talk about it with me. Mm -hmm. And I was just done. I was like, no, like, I, I kept repeating myself, like, you can't have a girlfriend just to feel good. Like, what did you expect me to do? Um, I'm not like any other girl, like, you know, like, there was no respect at Mm -hmm. all. I felt completely disrespected. And then what hurt me the most was that I thought I knew him, but I clearly didn't because that was his motive all along. I remember like, I just kept ignoring him. And then I saw that he was getting upset. Like he was crying. He was literally crying. (laughs) That's so interesting. (sighs) Oh oh my gosh. It was so crazy. He, but that it gets crazier. It definitely gets crazier. I feel like, do you think he was crying because like he felt like you rejected him in that moment? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't like know. he was so insecure about himself. So he felt like you like it wasn't like because you weren't ready. But like he in his mind, it was more like you rejected him. Oh, maybe <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're just having epiphanies right now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I never thought of it like that. Yeah, that's just so interesting that you said that he was crying because I'm just like, <laughs> what? mentally put myself in his shoes but if I tried to like and I just exposed myself to someone and then they reacted like that like of course I'd feel super embarrassed right and like yeah I guess yeah like if the tables were turned (laughs) oh shit (laughs) as a girl it's like the worst thing ever (laughs) yeah I mean it would make sense because of course like he got like His whole self got rejected (laughs) in that very moment. So it was kind of like a shock for him and a really bad shock for me as well. Because I was not ready to see that at all. I remember I grabbed my phone and I texted my mom and I'm like, mom, can you come pick me up? And I don't know how long I was there at his house. I want to say like maybe 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Mm -hmm where this just like happened. And I remember she, when she dropped me off, cause I didn't even have a car or my license. So she was taking me everywhere. So she, she told me like, okay, I'll pick you up like at eight. And I'm like, okay. And 
I never would have imagined that this would happen. So my mom's like the first person I went to and I'm like, pick me up, please, mom. <laughs> and the first thing she asks is, is everything okay? And I'm like, just pick me up. Stop asking questions. <laughs> And she's like, okay, I'm leaving now. So I'm like, okay, thank God. So then since I knew that my mom was about to like pick me up and save me, I am going to break up with him <laughs> because I know my mom's on her way. And, you know, there's no way in hell I'm going to stay with him. So like I kept dragging it out. I kept ignoring him. He kept trying to talk to me. I kept pushing him away. I was like, I don't want to talk right now. And then, um, when I told him that, like, I wanted to end the relationship, like that we were breaking up, he got even more upset, even more upset. He was like crying even more. And I was just like fed up. I'm like, nope, nope, like nothing's going to change my mind. And he started getting aggressive, thankfully not towards me because it could have ended really badly. Yeah. But he started getting aggressive towards himself. So I think what happened was that he was just so insecure. He was so mad at himself and right. like he's, he's literally beating himself up. Like he got the remote control. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> and he started hitting himself <laughs> in the head. You're lying. <laughs> I swear to you I'm not and I'm like oh, I'm seeing this happen right before my eyes Dude, this is even more traumatizing I'm like what the heck and I was just like sorry I'm just not even gonna change my mind and I knew like my mom was like on her way so I would I was just like doing whatever I could to just end it and then just be on my way and live my regular life. <laughs> and he, he was just destroyed. And I remember that when my mom eventually got to his house, because unfortunately she got lost and I had to like ask him for directions to his house, <laughs> which was so weird. Yeah. But like, I, I told him like, my mom's going to come and pick me up. Like she got lost and I don't know. And then he was like trying to like guide me to get her to where she needed to be while we're having that interaction and stuff and once I realized that my mom was here like my mom texted me I'm here he literally was so mad because he knew that I had just broken up with him and he knew that what he did was really messed up so he literally tore his shirt in half he like it reminded me of like Hulk where like they just like I don't even know. Lit his shirt in half. He he ripped it apart. <laughs> like I I was I was just more so concerned about my safety. So I'm like I think I just kept try to keep my distance because I didn't want that to happen. You know, like where where he like hits me or something. Yeah. So I I was just trying to stay as far away from him as possible. And like once he realized that I was actually leaving. And that happened. I'm just like, thank goodness my mom is here because I'm just going to run out the door. <laughs> he ended up having to get another shirt like from his room, I think. I couldn't believe this is what happened. And it was supposed to be such a nice day that we spent together, but he ruined it. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I literally got in the car with my mom and my mom's freaking out. She's like, what happened? Are you OK? Did he do something? I'm like, mom, just drive. <laughs> drive <laughs> like we were still in front of his house at this point so I'm like yeah. please drive I just wanna not be here like right. in in the car I think that's when I started crying and I told her that exactly what he did that that he just you know showed me his penis <laughs> <laughs> Like I explained to her the whole scenario hmm. and she's like, what? And my mom is like the sweetest mom where she, if I cry, like she's crying with me. So she's, she's like, oh my gosh. Like she's also like experiencing this with me. Mm -hmm. And I, I was just very like open about what happened and then I think like she also it also clicked to her where it was like oh my gosh you know they could have literally had sex <laughs> and she then she started trying to lecture me and she's like oh because you know you're not ready right I'm like mom do you think like 
I would be calling you if this happened, knowing I was ready. Like, what the heck? I know I'm not ready. <laughs> like, obviously, that's why this, that's why we're here. That's why I left. That's why I broke up with him. Like, hello. And, and then she kind of like felt relieved. She's like, oh, my daughter, the saint. <laughs> and I was just still mortified. I remember I tried to ignore like his text messages. He kept trying to text me and saying he's sorry. And I was just ignoring it, ignoring it. I was really upset. I was heartbroken because I didn't know like if something I did was wrong, like if I maybe misled him. And then I started feeling guilty for, for not doing anything. And I'm like, is something wrong with me? Like, should I have been ready in that moment and like just mm -hmm. went at it? Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I can't. Like, how, do, how can I process that? How can I do something when I'm not ready or I'm not like wanting to? Right. So it was just all this guilt, all of these emotions. So um, one of the girls in our friend group, like she asked me, she's like, what happened? Like, is everything okay? I'm like, oh. It, it's it's okay it's fine she's like no tell me and I just couldn't resist of course <laughs> of course so I told her I was like this is scary to just go through alone let me just tell her yeah. what I'm going through and she was so shocked and I'm I don't know what happened after that like I'm pretty sure it's high school so everyone yeah. found out eventually <laughs> um even though like no one really made it apparent besides one of his friends in my head I'm like I not I didn't do anything wrong so right you know I'm just saying it I, what happened like that's the truth I'm not lying but the thing that sucked the most was that I gave him a second chance and what? I know <laughs> I know I was so mad like so that I took a turn quickly <laughs> Like that was something that like I really regretted doing because I know it wasn't because I really had feelings for him. I only gave him a chance because I felt bad for him. And I felt bad that like he went through that or that I rejected him. And either way, nothing happened between us. Like I didn't speed up the process. I didn't suddenly become ready to go. But like I just made it clear to him that like that was not what I wanted like mm -hmm. I wasn't ready and two people have to be ready because you like communicated when you took him back about the sex like what did he say he said that was fine like he didn't care and you know he would wait and I'm like you're gonna be waiting forever <laughs> 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 because what the heck <laughs> I'm not gonna do that with you right he kept saying that he was sorry and I think it was also because like the fact that he made it so apparent that something was wrong in our relationship, like in school, it was making me uncomfortable just being in school because people were asking me like, oh, what's what's wrong with you guys? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you guys, you guys seem weird. Like, did you guys break up? And I just didn't want to keep explaining myself. Right. So I think part of it was just my sanity in school. That way he didn't have to be like so dramatic about the situation <laughs> and right. so like transparent because right back at you like I of course I'm going to tell people so <laughs> so it was just not a good mix at all so yeah I I did take him back but like after the week and then after we talked things out but then it changed a lot in our relationship though because now my mom knew that like he couldn't be trusted mm -hmm. and my mom tried to like resonate with him and with me so she was like trying to think of it from a, a guy's point of view and her daughter and like she was trying to really see what was going on and she did that like when I was telling her this whole story she's like oh yeah he probably you know has been talking to his friends a lot his friends mm -hmm. are probably at that level and he thought it was okay like yeah. she she was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, but at the end of the day, it doesn't make what he did better. So our relationship in total lasted like four months. Mm -hmm. I broke up with, with him the day before we turned four months because I, I guess I was just so fed up 
And since the beginning of our relationship was rocky because of what he did and then me giving him a second chance, it's like, yeah, I, I don't know. We already lost it. Like I'm trying to reconnect the spark and it's not there. It, it's not there. Yeah. I was trying to make it be there, but I can yeah. only do so much. Right. And I, I remember I broke up with him because of like the communication issues that I kept having with him. And it was just like, I think one day he just didn't text me until like late at night. And I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> We're supposed to be texting all the time. And it was just that communication issue that really made me mad. And I was on my last string. So I was like, you know what? Like, it's over. I, I can't. Bye. We, <laughs> we can't talk. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it was it was definitely a decision that haunted me, though, because that was the first time I felt heartbreak, mostly because I was trying to figure out how to be single and just be OK with just being by myself. The fact that I knew that I had a boyfriend made me feel a lot better about myself. But then knowing that that didn't work out, it was like, oh, my gosh, am I not good enough? Right. So it just got really lonely. And I knew that was like a decision of me officially breaking up with him. It it took me a while, a while to get over him. And meanwhile, when I broke up with him, like I think later on that month, he was in a new relationship and he kept like <laughs> relationship hopping. And I'm like, you were a nerd before you dated me. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> what the heck? Now you're <laughs> popular? Like, and meanwhile, I'm still single. I don't understand. <laughs> it always happens like that in high school. So mm -hmm. how have you personally like improved on your own communication with like romantic partners and like sexual communication since like your high school days? It's definitely gotten better. Like, it's crazy because when like when I started dating my boyfriend, he was from high school too, which is why he knew him and he was questioning me <laughs> in the relationship literally right before he asked me out. And I think that what was amazing was realizing that finally there was a guy that like I could talk to and didn't have to Google things <laughs> <laughs> to keep the, to keep the communication alive. Like before I started dating him, of course, like he seemed like such a great guy and I really felt like we connected emotionally and we just had a lot of chemistry that was undeniable, like in person and through text. Like we we were like right on and that's what I loved the most about him. And so when we officially made it, when we made it official, I think that the fact that we were both so transparent with our past. And I remember the day after he asked me to be his girlfriend, like after we processed it and once we finally were able to hang out again and it was all, all exciting, mm. I remember we we took a walk at the park and, you know, I just kept noticing so many great things about him that like he liked talking to my family and getting to know everyone in my family. I remember like we took a walk at the park and like we were just talking and at last I felt like myself and then we started talking about our past. So he literally told me everything about his exes. He's like, listen, I think that it's important for you to know. I've had a past with my exes. He's had a long-term relationship. Like I, his longest relationship was a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And that was something new to me. Like my longest relationship was four months. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that was not looking too good. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope he he like still gives me a chance and you know we were just both very very transparent and I remember I told him listen I've only dated this guy and this is what happened like I literally told him exactly what happened <laughs> because that's how comfortable I felt right and he's like, what? <laughs> he couldn't even believe it. He couldn't believe it at all. But I made it clear to him, like, I want to wait. I'm not ready. I hope that's okay with you. Like, I just made it. I was like, very like, okay, this is me. Okay. I've never right. had sex before. I'm not ready. And 
I just want to wait and see what happens. And he was totally fine with that. Like, I, you always hear the cliche of like, oh, how, how guys perceive someone who's like a virgin. And it's like, no, that's, that's not the case for every single guy. Like, there are so many nice guys out there that like really value the fact that you wait mm-hmm. and, and that you wait for someone special. And I think that that was never something that my boyfriend ever questioned me about or pressured me about. So I I was happy that we were able to talk about it, like literally really, really early in our relationship. That way it wasn't something that just magically came up out of nowhere. Right. (laughs) I absolutely love that. Like, I love how the conversation between you and your boyfriend just smoothly just happened. There was chemistry, there was honesty, there was respect, like all the things everyone should strive to find in a relationship. (laughs) And the fact that he was totally okay with you communicating about sex was, it's just, wow. I love it. Yeah, I'm just glad there was like a happy ending to this. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, because we've been together for six and a half years. So yeah, it's like, I think that in that time, I was just focused on the present moment. But then I think when I started realizing how it was just a completely different relationship because it's a completely different guy, more mature, more respectful, more family oriented, like I couldn't expect the same thing to happen like my ex did, you know, like I couldn't expect that from him. So I, I always recommend to people that like, even if you have a rough past, like don't portray that with someone new you're meeting because mm-hmm. it's not, the, they're not the same person. Yep. They are not. And say it I, louder for the people in the back. <laughs> they're not the same person. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> because I, I've gotten my heart broken so many times and I've wanted love so, so badly. I wanted to be in love. And like, I just knew that even after my ex, um, I was just ready. I was ready to find the real thing. And I'm like, I know it's out there. My sister is in love and, you know, now she's married. And I just knew that that could happen to anyone. And I was hopeful that it could happen to me as well. So- I literally love that. I love, I just, wow, that's incredible <laughs> to me. I there's hope <laughs> there. Yeah. There's hope for everyone out there yeah. you're listening. Cause I, I know we were going to talk about it for like a second, but I want to talk about the, the instance that happened with your ex about mm-hmm. like pulling it out. Basically last year when I was in college, this was my senior year and there was an individual in class. This happened. <gasps> in, this happened. What? Yeah. What? It, this happened in class and this yeah and this 27 year old man decided that it was okay to just pop it out like what yes and just pop it out and just do his thing like (gasps) like do his thing like the whole thing and he thought (laughs) and and that's what I was telling you in the beginning when we were talking it wasn't like more like for me personally like me like experiencing this like as a woman it wasn't so much of like oh my god like the shock that you might have had in high school but it was more of like a shock that like the audacity of this man thinking this is okay to do to another woman in a public space in a class ew i can't believe that yeah what there are so many similar instances whether that's like closed doors like in a in a house in a club in a bar at a party that Mm -hmm. this probably happens to so many women every day but like in different situations and you might not even be dating this person Like this person can be like somebody that's trying to get with you, not even like in a relationship, but just trying to sleep with you and like doing something like that. Like a lot of people would categorize that as sexual assault, but. Oh my gosh. I mean, like there's no consent there. Like you're not exactly asking for it. That's, I just think that I'm glad that you share it as well because you made me feel less alone. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's the whole point. What would be your like biggest piece of advice for young teens and like girls in their 20s that might have experienced similar things or all that kind of stuff that we talked about? Like, what's your main piece of advice that you would tell someone like your sister or like an older woman? Yeah, I would say listen to your instincts. Yeah. And really, really listen to your instincts. (laughs) Like, don't try to. Don't try to like make yourself feel ready, speed up the process to get ready. Like, no, Uh, when this stuff happens, it's supposed to be when you are in that place with your partner and you guys are both on that page and just ready for that. If like one of you are not ready and if that person is you, like, don't, don't worry. Like, don't, don't think it's yourself. Like, just think that like, if, that person was the right person for you then he would wait or she would wait you know it exactly. so it depends cuz i'm sure i i don't i don't know if this probably happens to guys as well but girls flashing themselves <laughs> who knows i'm sure it, it happens to everyone in every yeah. type of relationship yeah 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 it's like you just know when you're not ready and yeah. i think that the way I knew that I wasn't ready was just literally knowing that I never had those thoughts, especially in that moment. And I'm not going to just make up those thoughts and like, you know, try to picture it and just go for something that I'm really insecure about or really unsure about or scared even. Because when you feel scared, when you feel confused when you feel nervous and you just want to escape like that's that's your instinct telling you get out like you don't have to you don't have to stay because I could have like literally stayed the rest of our hangout and then you know like try to forget about it but my instinct was telling me to leave the situation because it was going to be for the for my own good and I'm glad I did because he started getting aggressive so right I think that our instincts never lie and never let instances where a traumatic experience happened to affect the way you think about yourself. Definitely don't think that you're the problem or that something's wrong with your sexuality or like, you know, there are so many questions that can come up Mm -hmm. where you're uncertain about and you're worried about it. But if if you keep like believing that and thinking like, wow, what's wrong with me? Like, how, how did I not do this? Like, and then you force yourself to do something that you don't want to do. You're, you're not being true to yourself and what good is it doing anyway? You know, you have to, at the end of the day, like put yourself first and really, really like hang on to that and, and just trust yourself. Yeah, I definitely agree with everything you just said. And like, (laughs) I love um, when you were talking about your story, like how you stood on your own two feet and you like, like you just took control of the situation. And you, I like, like when you were telling the story, I really felt like you had controlled the situation and you knew yourself and you knew how to handle it. Um, I feel like that's like a big, like a huge thing. Cause like, even when I was in a similar situation too, and I just said, like, I Mm -hmm. knew I was older, like, yeah, like I wasn't like high school, but like, I was older. I was just like, dude, this is so dumb. Like, like, I'm like, like he probably thought it was so funny, like, ha ha. But like, I was like, so sure myself. And like, I would like, I would be ready to scream. Like, yeah. that's just who I am. But like, mm-hmm. I didn't at that moment. But like, if you need to make a scene, make a scene. Yeah, yeah. Be just extra. to protect, <laughs> yeah, protect yourself. Like, yeah. you never know, like, how far someone is willing to get when it comes to that, so. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You don't know their intentions. Like, I'm really glad that, this happened like not smoothly because it was very rocky and it was weird and awkward. And I definitely made a dramatic exit from his house. 
As you should, <laughs> as a real queen should. Well, thank you so much for being on my podcast. This has been a very great conversation, a very important one. And we've also discovered incredible epiphanies. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Monica, for having me. It was really such a joy to be on your podcast and talk about this experience because I know um, I would never cover this on my episodes because <laughs> I like, it doesn't fit my genre somehow. <laughs> I know. I'm like, there's no positive twist. I mean, <laughs> I guess the love part, but right. I don't know. So <laughs> I'm glad that you have this platform where you allow like women everyone to just really put themselves out there and put their stories out there because even though it's like embarrassing or or a little like strange and crazy like all those things really help vent it out and actually you know reflect on your yes definitely I definitely agree And everyone who's tuning in and listening right now, if you want to keep up with Myra, her podcast Instagram is myrayof.sunshine, where she hosts all of the important links that you need to know to stay connected with her, such as her YouTube channel that allows you to watch and listen to her podcast on all major platforms. So thank you so much for everyone for tuning in. I have so many awesome guests coming up to share their hashtag boyfriend proof story. So stay tuned for that. And of course, if you or someone you know would like to be on the show to share your story, shoot me a DM on my Instagram at boyfriend proof podcast, and we'll be back for another boyfriend proof story. Goodbye.